Hi, I'm Gretel Egan, Content Manager for Wombat Security Technologies. I wanted to talk to you today about a topic that you've probably heard about in some way, shape, or form, either at work or in your personal life, and that is social engineering. Now, social engineering means different things in different contexts, but when we talk about social engineering in the context of cybersecurity, what we really mean by that is that a social engineer is essentially a scam artist or a con artist or whatever your preferred terminology. Think Frank Abagnale of Catch Me If You Can fame. A social engineer is really trying to gain access to people or places or things that they should not have access to and that they generally would not be able to access if they presented themselves in a straightforward and truthful manner. So how might you encounter a social engineer in the workplace or in your personal life? Uh, there are essentially three methods that we are seeing attackers use. Uh, the first being email. And this is really the red letter attack method. It is cheap and it is easy and it is effective. Um, from ranging from general phishing emails to spear phishing emails, which are essentially very personalized phishing attacks, um, up to business email compromise attacks and whaling attacks. Um, think of Moby Dick and the great white whale. I'm quite certain that's probably the root of what the terminology for whaling is. Um, they're going after the big score, and so they are going after a big target, uh, someone with means and access. But beyond email, there are a number of other ways that you might encounter a social engineer. Um, the first being communication channels like social media or text messaging or even by phone. Um, and then the third, which is the most brazen attack, um, and that's an in-person attack where someone impersonates someone and goes into um, a state of a business or um, a facility and attempts to gain access to people, places, money, or goods, or something else that they should not have access to. So there is a common ground that we see among the different methods of social engineering attacks. And regardless of whether um, a social engineer uses email or a phone or an in-person attack, what they're really trying to do is take advantage of human emotions. And we are very social creatures. We, if you look at social media, there are countless ways and applications and people are sharing even the mi most minute details of their life. People look to share and engage with other people. My husband makes friends in a 30 second elevator ride. Social engineers recognize these tendencies and try to take advantage of that. We tend to be too trusting. We tend to take things at face value and we tend to believe what someone tells us and be non-confrontational. So, um, the different emotions that are taken advantage of range from extreme emotions to very kind of simple emotions. Uh, we see a lot of social engineers taking advantage of fear. Um, you might receive an email that makes you think that an account has been compromised or that a bank account has been frozen or that someone has stolen um, a credit card number, um, something that makes you want to react without thinking. I had a friend last week who received a phone call um, from someone claiming to be from the IRS. Uh, they told her they had sent her a confidential classified document through the mail that she had not responded to and that she was going to have a subpoena out for her. This is a busy mom of three who runs her own business. She totally believed that she could have missed something like that. Thankfully, someone overheard her talking on the phone and told her that it was a scam. So she backed off. But that sort of attempt to make you jump ahead without thinking is a hallmark of a social engineering attack. But we also see social engineers trying to play on even more positive emotions. Um, our willingness to help others is a big one. We have seen um, after um, natural disasters, phishing emails come out that prey on our desire to help, asking for donations. They seem legitimate, but they are not. Um, another uh, good example is an in-person attack where someone will come up to a secure door carrying a bunch of boxes and being unable to open the door themselves. They count on someone helping them gain access to hold the door open for them even though they should not be allowed into that area. On a less obvious level, we also see people preying on our desire to do our jobs. Um, if you think about it, we're really not inclined to say no to our authority figures. 
If someone asks us to do something at work, we want to do it. So this is why some business type attacks tend to be more successful. If we feel that we've gotten an attachment from our HR department, if we feel that we've gotten a password reset link from our IT department, or if you feel you've gotten a personalized email from the CEO, you're inclined to act on that because you believe it is something that you should do to get your job done. So how do you prevent yourself from falling for an attack? Well, we don't have time to go into that today, but stay tuned for the second part of this social engineering vlog series when we will talk to you about how you can really hone in and recognize an attack, take a step back and prevent yourself from falling for it. So stay tuned.